Since the original discovery of three different exoplanets in the 90s, the scientists have been able to discover nearly 13,000 different planets with quite a lot of features and quite a lot of properties not visible here in the solar system. Although most of these unusual planets so far have still not been confirmed, but they do probably exist. And when it comes to finding these planets, two methods have been used very successfully to discover the vast majority. The most successful method is known as the transit. That's essentially when we're looking at the star and trying to discover a tiny shadow passing in front of it. And over the years, some stars revealed quite a lot of different planets out there, allowing us to find several thousand different candidates. And that's of course the most successful method to date. Then we have another method that discovered approximately thousand different planets, known as the radial velocity. And that's essentially when the scientists look at the profile or the spectrum of the star they're looking at and discover that there's an unusual pattern where the star is redshifted and blue shifted with a very specific period. And that's because something is clearly orbiting around it. A lot of very massive planets have been discovered this way and this method generally relies on just the observations of the color of the star, nothing else. Then we have the direct imaging method, where the scientists essentially cover the star and try to discover the planet by trying to see it directly. The James Webb telescope was officially able to do so very recently and you can find more about this in one of the videos in the description. But this of course relies on two assumptions. First, the planet has to be pretty far away from the star. And second, it also has to be warm enough to produce just the right frequency of light for us to see it usually infrared frequencies, and that means that the planet has to be massive enough to have enough internal heat. This usually applies to Jupiter-like planets or something even more massive than Jupiter, not so much to smaller planets. Another interesting method that the scientists used before, and the one that was able to discover some of the most distant planets, is the gravitational microlensing. And that's where the star and the planet produce very, very tiny gravitational lensing effects, which are then visible as the planet and the star pass in front of a distant object. But unfortunately in this case, it's only really observable once, and this detection is not really going to be visible ever again for possibly up to a million years, meaning that this is a one-off detection. To date, a few hundred planets were discovered using this method. But then there is another method that's actually extremely difficult to reproduce, but produces some of the most accurate observations. The method known as astrometry, and that's when, instead of looking for a redshift or instead of looking for the planet, the scientists look at how the star moves around an empty spot in space and try to determine what's causing its wobble. In this case, by looking at the star, we actually can determine that the star is indeed moving because of the planet. And unlike the previous method using redshift and blue shift, this can often be extremely accurate because of various radio telescopes that can actually produce super accurate observations such as the network known as VLBA, Very Long Baseline Array, a network of radio telescopes over 8,000 kilometers away from each other, creating a kind of a virtual planet-sized dish. And this is exactly what the scientists recently used to not just identify a planet in a, another star system, but to also create a first ever and also extremely accurate 3D map of the entire star system along with the planet orbiting around one of the stars. In this case, looking at our neighbor, 20 light years away from us, a star known as EQ Pegasi. A star whose previous observations already established that it seems to be a binary system with two red dwarfs orbiting around one another. But the scientists wanted to find out more about the star system and wanted to actually see if they can create a perfect reproduction of how these stars orbit in three dimensions. And so they employed the very long base array telescopes to create an extremely accurate observations using astrometry. You can actually see how the star wobbled as they were observing it over time. With the bigger star here being about 44% the mass of our sun, and the smaller star being roughly around 17%, with the average separation being about 30 astronomical units and a single orbit taking approximately 230 years. And one of the main reasons this system was chosen, apart from its distance to us, was because this actually represents one of the most common star systems out there. Nearly 75% of all of the stars in the galaxy are red dwarfs, and the vast majority of star systems is a binary. So this, in a sense, represents the most common type. But because the orbits here take so long, they actually had to rely on some of the older data going back in time 
as far back as 1941. But by using the modern data from the VLAB, they were then able to create extremely accurate map of the motion of the star in the night skies. And so using this astrometry method, to their surprise, they found a planet orbiting around one of the stars. Because in that case, the star was actually wobbling a little bit too much compared to how it should be moving. With a planet determined to be a gas giant, very likely about twice as massive as Jupiter. But orbiting at a relatively high inclination of 150 degrees, and also with an orbit of about 250 days. But more intriguingly, and more unusually, orbiting in a retrograde orbit, in the opposite direction from the other star. And that by itself is already very difficult to explain. And if we were to imagine what the star system looks like, it might be something like this. With the planet being in this unusual location in the star system, and the overall motion looking kind of like this. And so at the moment it would be relatively difficult to explain how the star system was created, but that's not really the point. The point is that, first, the scientists were able to even see this planet using this extremely accurate new method, and second of all, they were able to create this 3D map that extremely accurately represents what the star system looks like in reality, created using various models in order to see which of the models can actually fit the observations directly. But more importantly, it demonstrates that the astrometry has now achieved new heights. The improved sensitivity of various radio telescopes and the size of the network now allows the scientists to detect very small planets. As a matter of fact, it should technically be able to detect a lot of smaller rocky planets as well, similar to planet Earth. So in a sense, this was a kind of a test of technology or a proof of concept, and it definitely worked. But that's just the first paper I wanted to discuss, because around the same time another paper came out discovering a completely new method that we can use to find even more planets out there. But the method that we can probably only use around relatively young stars. In this case this is an object known as a T Tauri star, we've discussed these in previous videos you can find in the description, and it represents a kind of a baby star and still developing with an accretion disk around it, and also possesses a relatively large accretion disk around it. Although this one is much farther away, about 500 light years away from us, and it's mostly been imaged using radio telescopes such as ALMA. And because of the distances, and because this is basically a collection of dust orbiting around a young star, there's actually a limited way for us to generally find planets that are forming around these stars. One of the ways is to look for various gaps in the disk itself, such as the ones that you see right here, which can maybe suggest that there is a planet forming there as well. But in the last few years, the scientists determined that you can actually form these gaps in some other ways as well. So it doesn't always mean that there is a planet. But by looking close enough and by actually discovering something else here, it does become possible to discover where the planets really form. And so in this case, by zooming in and by looking closely, the scientists behind the recent paper discovered another unusual formation that's extremely difficult to explain unless it's a planet. They actually found very unusual arcs and very unusual clumps at very specific angles of 120 degrees, or technically 60 degrees and 60 degrees. And in general, when it comes to orbits, the 60 degree angle usually forms in a very specific situation when there are two massive bodies. We refer to these as Lagrange points. And so this right here, and also this right here, is 60 degrees, whereas this is 120. In order for something to form Lagrange points, you have to have some kind of a massive object orbiting a much more massive object such as a star. And so by finding these unusual clumps and unusual arcs at these very specific angles, the scientists now believe that right between them there has to be a planet that's maybe just a little bit more massive than Neptune, or possibly a little bit less massive than Saturn. Located around a gap that's about 42 astronomical units away from the star itself, so around the same distance as Pluto is from the Sun. But in this case, the degree of separation is extremely important mathematically. Unless there is some kind of a massive object at this region, it's impossible to explain them otherwise. Having these very specific angles formed by chance is extremely unlikely. And so the scientists are pretty certain that this has to be a planet with a mass of a typical mid-sized gas giant. They don't really see it directly, but they see the effects that it's forming in the disk. And, if they are correct, they've just discovered yet another new method of detecting exoplanets out there. By detecting very specific clumps of matter, possibly asteroids or possibly just a lot of gas, at these very specific 60 degree angle of separation regions, it would definitely imply that there's a planet in between them. 
in this case, a planet that's probably around 3 million years old, and a planet that's going to have its own Trojans, just like Jupiter and other gas giants in the solar system, once it's done forming and once the star system disperses the disk around it. And honestly, in the last few years, all of these new ways of finding planets have actually really impressed me and have been super fun to follow. There's another video I released not so long ago with yet another method that finds more exoplanets. Which also means that we're kind of entering a new golden age for finding even more exoplanets and for potentially finding new objects out there in our own galaxy. And in this case, it wasn't even using new telescopes or using some kind of a new analysis. The actual data was always there. It was just really applying some of the knowledge from the solar system and using the math of the orbits to discover something that was missed the first time. More about this in that paper in the description below. But I guess on that note, well, that's, for now at least, all I wanted to mention. Even more exciting planetary discoveries, new methods to discover even more planets in the future, and if you enjoy exoplanets and discoveries, a reason for you to subscribe because we're going to be talking about so many more in the future. On that note, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description, and either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.